This disease is quite extraordinary because it's transmitted through physical proximity. So it's a special challenge for cities as well as for a more interconnected world. The coronavirus is changing life as we know it on a daily basis. In COVID 2025, we'll explore how the pandemic is rewriting our future. This crisis is really challenging how cities operate, not just in terms of their public health, but fundamentally as sort of networks of interdependence and socioeconomic contact and interaction. The virus kind of its pattern of contagion and spread gives us a, an X-ray of our own societies. We see very clearly, for example, that when it enters a large city, it propagates much faster, that the number of cases grows faster. Its attack rate is bigger than in smaller communities. And so this is kind of reinforcing ideas that we've had for a long time about urban science and about how cities work. It gives us really a special X-ray into this relationship. So we see issues of inequality and neighborhood effects, that different places in cities for different socioeconomic groups are different. So what is critical through this unfolding crisis that will also be absolutely critical in the long term is that we are able to learn from this. So on the one hand, uh, what we know historically, cholera is an example 100 years ago or more, is that cities that were able to respond effectively, they were able to find ways to rid cities out of the pathogen, but also create better sanitation in that case, better ways but for people to interact that are safe, but they also promote in general better public health, were uh, able to emerge much more reinforced and supported, much more resilient from the crisis. And so that is the big test of the current crisis, is whether we can really generate um, a good articulation of knowledge and policy that is responsive to circumstances and that can allow us to uh, manage the situation before it goes epidemic in the future. There are many examples as to how uh, ordinary life is being impacted to, for most people as a result of this pandemic. A lot of the basic services that we depend on is from you know, restaurants to haircuts to all the little things that we uh, take for granted in city life that, but that's so important to make our lives work. So in the city, I like to say that we're all interdependent. So we depend in immensely on these almost anonymous networks of, uh, of functions. And all of these are being disrupted by this crisis. And it's not clear exactly how they will be reconstituted as we come back from it and in what order. So uh, in some sense, we had to disassemble this complexity of cities in order to fight the disease. Uh, and in the process, the, the main objective has to be also that we create better living conditions, better health to most people, as well as the infrastructure uh, to uh, generate better human development and more sustainability. One of the things that I think has not been recognized enough is how fast the response from science has been. That we're learning a lot about the parameters of the disease, but we're also learning uh, a lot increasingly in terms of how human societies work, what makes them all vulnerable, the role of having a policy that's well-informed, that's responsive, and that is effective. For example, the countries in Asia that had experienced the first outbreak of a coronavirus a few years ago were already much better at dealing with this one. The best scenario is that this is not just sort of one fight, but it's really specifically a, an important learning event that will allow us to do much better in the future, not just with this specific epidemic, but many others like this, as well as creating a whole new substance to have well-being and health in these environments. The worst scenario is that we don't do that, that we don't learn from this, and that next time we will not only be equally exposed to a disease like this, but will be also distrustful of our ability to respond to an epidemic like this will be more distrustful of each other and our institutions and our systems of public health. I'm optimistic that most places will learn from this, that we're able to spread that knowledge and action such that we uh, create well-being that's more general, both in, in terms of uh, places and people inside cities, inside nations and across the world.